You know, the Apostle Paul is one of the outstanding characters in the New Testament. After the Lord Jesus Christ, really, in the New Testament, who could compare with Paul in his great zeal to preach the gospel and his great largeness of heart for the churches? He really was a shepherd. And then Paul being willing to endure such uh, suffering and persecution and hardship for the cause of Christ. He was beaten. He was pelted with stones. In Philippi, he was thrown in jail unjustly and yet sang praises to God along with Silas. And uh, Paul just suffered much. He suffered shipwreck. He went through a lot. It really cost him a lot to obey the heavenly vision he received from Jesus, which was to preach the gospel. And Paul did that and he did it with great enthusiasm. And I'd just like to share a few things about Paul being unashamed of the gospel. And this is such an important thing. Not only for Paul, but for, for us contemporary Christians today to be unashamed of the gospel. And in the book of Romans, which really is a masterpiece of Paul just really unpacking the gospel for it and plumbing the depths of it and just helping us to see different angles on the gospel and how wonderful the gospel is. When Paul starts writing to the Romans, it's almost like he can't help himself because it's in the very first verse he refers to the gospel. In Romans chapter 1 verse 1, he calls himself Paul a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Yes, the gospel wasn't just something that Paul dabbled in or something he took a casual interest in. No, he was set apart for the gospel. In fact, in Romans 2 and also in Romans 16, Paul calls it my gospel. Oh, yes, he had real ownership. This message had deeply impacted him and he had a great zeal to share it with others. See, if you are convinced of something, it gives you that, that zeal to want to tell other people about it. And Paul had personally um, experienced the power of the life transforming gospel and he'd seen it as he traveled land and sea and preached the gospel. Yes, there was persecution from some, but there was life transformation among others. For example, when Paul went to Thessalonica, what happened? The people turned from idols to serve the living God. Now, how do you get people to do that? If someone is deeply entrenched in idolatry, if, if it's something that's embedded in their thinking, that their parents worshipped idols, they, their ancestors worshipped idols, and it's just part of who they are. It's their identity. How can you get someone to turn from that to another God? Paul saw it happen because the gospel is so powerful. And in Romans chapter 1, he makes this great statement. He says down in verse 15, I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. So he was just zealous to get to Rome and preach the gospel there, that great city, but, but a wicked city as well. And Paul just wanted to take the good news there and see people transformed by the gospel there. And he makes his great statement in verse 16. Really, a, It's really a personal declaration. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What a, what a glorious declaration this is. Paul could say it with conviction. He was not ashamed of the gospel. You know, when Jesus was crucified by Rome, to people looking on, it looked like Rome had crushed another person. That Jesus was supposedly the would-be king of the Jews, but Rome had just dominated him and Rome had crushed him at the cross and Rome had defeated another person. And so to go to Rome and preach the gospel, some people might say, that's foolishness. Why are you saying that salvation is through faith in a crucified criminal? And Paul said to the Corinthians that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But Paul was not ashamed because he knew this was the true message, the true way of salvation, that when we trust in Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, we encounter the gospel and the gospel. It's like the gospel collides with a lost person and it becomes to us salvation because he says here the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. I don't know if there's anyone watching this who's already a Christian. Oh, it's time to be bold and unashamed with the gospel because this is the life transforming message. There may be someone watching this today who's not yet a Christian. I encourage you to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus died on the cross for you. He laid down his life as a, as a substitutionary offering for you so that the judgment for your sin was diverted from you onto Jesus Christ on the cross because there he became our sin-bearing Savior. And I encourage you today to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible promises us, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.